welcome back on our planet, the uh, bi-weekly show that takes you around New York and in other places around the world in search for stories that are giving us examples of sustainable lifestyles. I'm your host, Pamela Peters, and it's a pleasure today to take you with me on the tour to the Seaport Museum downtown at Fulton Street. It is a pleasure to connect my home country, Belgium, with New York because there's a very special exhibition taking place. There was a very famous uh, line called the Red Star Line that took over 3.8 million immigrants from Antwerp to New York and set a steady pace on American immigration. It is a pleasure to therefore introduce to you today a guided tour at the museum. <laughs> A very exclusive one-on-one -on -one will follow next. I had the pleasure of talking to Erwin Joost, curator from the Eugene van Meegem Museum. A couple of the paintings of van Meegem are hanging here and we are talking about the painter and about the influence of immigration here in America. <laughs> coincidence that we see the two families living next to each other you see the uh, family the Peters family maybe it's uh, your own family uh, Pam mm -hmm. uh, was living next to uh, the family mother van Meegum had number six and she had a telephone number number 26 so these were the first telephone numbers in Antwerp mm -hmm. and probably it was for the passengers of first and second class uh, that these first telephones were installed probably around 1880 or something yeah you seem to know quite a lot of um, Van Meegum. There is a good reason for that. You are the curator of the Hugo Van Meegum Museum in Antwerp, and you just arrived to New York to be my very private and special guide here. Welcome, Erwin. Thank you for the invitation, uh, Pam. So we have uh, some very rare paintings in the exhibition. Mm -hmm. The one you see there is the tavern of Mother Van Meegum, and this has been painted in 1912. And in fact, it was Mother Van Meegum who made good money thanks to the immigration uh, process because the people went to the tavern and they had the last beer or a coffee, they could make a phone call. You see a poster of the Red Star Line uh, is hanging on the wall. And Mother Van Meegum had two women working for her. So she made good money and she supported her son, the artist who didn't sell anything. Mm -hmm. Then the other painting we see here is the view of the roads of Antwerp with the ships of the Red Star Line. And this painting is very, very nice. It's an important painting. It uh, belonged to a very good friend of Van Meegum, uh, a writer, a famous uh, Flemish writer. And you see the chimney of the ships of the uh, Red Star Line. It's a black chimney with the white color. So the Red Star disappeared around 1890. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, there was also a Red Star on uh, mm -hmm. the chimney. So immigration um, was a very important uh, flow uh, in the last century. It is the same situation today, but the means are different. Now people travel by plane and by car, then it was the boat. How many people 
did come to uh, America through Antwerp? Well, uh, the estimation is that from Antwerp between 1870 and 1935, something about uh, 3 million emigrants left uh, Europe yeah. through Antwerp. Yeah. Compared to Hamburg, I think Antwerp was the second most important European port of departure. It was yeah. a gateway to, to America. Gateway to America, 3 million, that kind of represents 25% of the whole flow of uh, immigrants that no. arrived in Ellis Island, or am I wrong? It's less, it's yeah. less. Uh, I read that something like 17 million uh, immigrants arrived, uh, so it's less than uh, 25%. Yeah. But still, it's, it's important. So they would say that um, New York and Antwerp have a very important relationship together. Indeed, Antwerp was considered uh, an American port already in the 1815 uh, period mm -hmm. uh, with the Napoleon Wars. Antwerp was very important for um, American uh, export yep. to Europe. Yep. So also there was a lot of American investment, General Motors, Ford Company, Bell Telephone. Mm -hmm. And of course, we still have the very important link with the diamond world between yep. Antwerp and New York. And of course, the very important Jewish community in both uh, cities. Because um, uh, it happens to be that we're both from Antwerp, of course, so we're very happy to talk a little bit deeper about Antwerp and um, stress on the glory. We, you mentioned diamonds, um, which is an important trade. There's also lace, chocolate, beers. The shipping industry is still very, very important, um, still with America. With America, there is, uh, this exhibition is sponsored by two important Belgian shipping companies and one of these, uh, no, both companies have contacts in America. Yeah. So that's true. It's still uh, it's normal that uh, the second most important port of Europe mm -hmm. has shipping contacts with America. I think yeah. it's, it's logic. We will um, talk a little bit more about immigration. The second room here of the museum actually gives you the possibility to walk the exact same walk that the immigrants took. And uh, there are lovely pictures, um, original uh, pieces, I would say, from that era, which shows a very beautiful Antwerp. And we're going to have a little stroll and give you the sensation of what immigrants, um, you know, had to go through. And then we'll talk more about the emotional side uh, brought by Van Meegum and, and also uh, detailed by Erwin about what it was way back then to be an immigrant and to leave your home country and to start a new life in America. Okay. Okay, let's go. Okay. Is this where we're starting, Central Station, or we should start another way? No, we should start here. Okay. This is the place where the immigrants arrived, and you see the building is very beautiful. It was uh, inaugurated in 1905, and people often call the Kaiserlei in Antwerp the Antwerp Champs Elysees. Yeah. It's very uh, similar. Now, of course, when you see these drawings, you can imagine that these poor people, often coming from Eastern Europe, when they arrived in Antwerp, they were really uh, in surprise because they left their little villages in Poland, in Russia, and these people only had little suitcases. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very nice uh, drawing by Van Meegum of a Jewish Eastern European uh, immigrant. And this drawing will be used for the bronze sculpture that will be inaugurated in Antwerp uh, next year. Yeah. A life-size sculpture in bronze made after this drawing. So that's important to, to have in the view of the environment of the city of Antwerp, the, the images of Van Meegum are coming back. There were two types of immigrants, actually, that uh, used the Red Star Line to set foot to America. Exactly, you mentioned the Jewish immigrants, which was a big part, and then you had also the people from Eastern Europe who had to flee from a crisis. Yes, uh, we um, estimate the percentage of Jewish uh, immigrants on 50%. So yeah. it's a lot of the yeah. 3 million that left Antwerp yeah. for America. 50% was Jewish. So the other 50% uh, were Europeans leaving the old continent to, to look for their happiness for a better world in America. And of the 3 million, 10% only were uh, Belgian. 
So that makes 300,000 Belgian uh, immigrants, yeah. most of them Flemish, most of them farmers. Yeah. And they had to leave because the, 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 the surface of the, the farm was not large enough to, to, to give them good money. In the meantime, Flanders has changed a great deal. We're now very active in the, uh, in the third sector, how we call it. It's not agricultural that much anymore. Services, Services exactly. Uh, after the central station, what's our next stop? Well, uh, they walk to the Lestraat, uh -huh. and you see beautiful photographs here oh, from yeah. the Lestraat. And this is a pastel by Van Meegum of one of these buildings built in a neo style. Mm -hmm. In New York, of course, you have the Beaux Arts style. Yeah. But this is, uh, I would say, very close, but a bit earlier. So these buildings are from 1880, 1890. So it's also very close to the atmosphere of Paris. And this is a very nice uh, pastel by Van Meegum from 1912, mm -hmm. the year the Titanic sank. Yeah. And the Titanic, as you know, Pam, was a sister ship of one of the ships of the Red Star Line. Yeah. So the whole history of this exhibition, in fact, is, is, is Europe is, is very comparable with, with other major European cities. Mm -hmm. The buildings that you saw earlier um, from Antwerp are still the same. They're still there. They're preserved. And it's a treasure. If you have the chance to go to Antwerp, take a stop. And maybe you should make that same trip from... Uh, Central Station, uh, Central Station in Flemish. We might as well tuck in a little word of Flemish. What's your next stop? Well, uh, I would mention this drawing, and that's the Mer. The Mer is the commercial main street of Antwerp. Mm -hmm. And this is an early drawing of Amigum where you see the influence of Munch. And that's interesting yep. to mention. Yeah, exactly. It's very dark, very depressing. Yes. There must have been a lot of emotional... Uh, distress happening with him the poverty probably yes. that he had to go through was the reason why he painted so dark Vermeegum was quite young when he made his uh, strong drawing he was 24 years old and he was a member of a literary anarchist group mm -hmm. the chapel and he read the books of Bakunin Kropotkin Dostoevsky Gorky Tolstoy and it's the European atmosphere of the fin de siècle that yeah. you see in his art yeah. of that period. There's another detail that you mentioned to me which I think is of major importance. Maybe it was a reason for his depression. He got kicked out of school. Yes indeed. Van Meegum was dismissed at the Antwerp Academy in 1896 by the same professor who threw out Van Gogh. So Van Gogh was in Antwerp at the Antwerp Academy and it was Professor Siebert who kicked out Van Gogh in 1886. Mm -hmm. So Van Meegum exactly the same professor threw Van Meegum out 10 years later, 1896. Yeah. Well, I think genius people, genius minds are eccentric people and they kind of fall out of the boat, if we could say it. Maybe his personality was not that common either, or do you...? Well, in German, they call such people Einzelgänger. Yeah. And Einzelgänger are geniuses. Yeah. They, go, they do it their own way. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes even years and years later that people say this man was a genius because he was a bit strange during his life, but he did it his own way. And that's why he becomes famous now, today. But then unfortunately their legacy uh, was not much worth while they were living, but the prices went always up when they passed away. So that's the sad so side to Einzelgangers. Yes, it's true. But uh, often these people are picked up by, by dealers or by, by galleries or museums. But you must know Van Gogh was only made famous 50 years after his death. And it were two American collectors, Norton Simon and Armand Hammer mm -hmm. uh, from Los Angeles, both from Los Angeles, who started buying Van Gogh in the 50s. Yeah. So before that, Van Gogh was still cheap. Yeah. You could buy a drawing or a painting uh, of Van Gogh. Here we see the uh, building of the Red Star Line. Yeah. So the people from the Mer went to the Kammerstraat, and there was the building of the Red Star Line where they bought their tickets. So the people were warned mm -hmm. when they arrived in the railway station not to buy the tickets at the railway station because tickets were forged. Yeah. And you can imagine when people with their last money bought forged tickets, they were obliged to stay in Antwerp. Yeah. Huh? Drama. Drama. It was drama. a drama. Yeah, yeah. 
So this building, unfortunately, doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But the building that has replaced this Red Star Line building belonged to the family of Dries van Noten. I am very well aware, and at that corner in the Nationale Straat, he has his current. Uh, Indeed, it's <laughs> just uh, next to yep. the building where the Red Star Line was. So Dries van Noten, the famous Antwerp fashion uh, man. Huh? My best friend used to work for Dries. Ah. Yeah, that's why I know exactly where he is right now. <laughs> ah. With the story, everything comes... Uh, comes alive, huh? Comes alive, yeah. yeah. Let's see what our next step is before we're yeah, boarding. Example. It's also interesting to mention, because in fact Antwerp was the New York of the 16th century. Mm -hmm. But it was due to the fall of Antwerp in 1585, when the Spanish army took control of the city of Antwerp, that the entrepreneurs, the businessmen of Antwerp, left Antwerp for Amsterdam. Yeah. And they started the West Indian Company. It was a man from Antwerp, Willem Uslings, mm -hmm. who created, with his money, the West Indian Company that chartered the first ship to start New York in 1624. And the people who went ashore on Manhattan were not Dutch, it, they were Belgian. They were Walloons, 30 yeah. Walloon families. They started New York. I'm happy that you are, you know, making history. Uh, or would I say that you're pointing out the truth of history and that we are uh, once again uh, making names uh, as Belgian people. Um, other Belgian famous people, such as Sax, the man who invented saxophone, Belgian as well. So we have a lot of um, legacies to offer and that hopefully now will be known a little bit better. That's true. Yeah, great. Okay, well, I'm getting tangled in my microphone. Um, let's take the next um, step. We're getting... We're getting closer to the water. We're getting much closer to the water. We had, on, if you take the corner left here, you're at the big market space. With the town hall? Yep, with the town hall. Because the beautiful cathedral, we could say this is the skyscraper of the Middle Ages. Yep. It's incredible that those people in the 13th and 14th century were able to build a cathedral of 123 meter high. Mm -hmm. Then this building belonged to a German Jewish businessman, Mr. Malinkrot. And we must underline that Antwerp, already in 1900, was really a cosmopolitan world city. It was the, the s a very important European uh, port, and 10% of the, the population was from foreign origin. Yeah. You mentioned also in the previous uh, part of the exhibition something about uh, the time that Antwerp fell. Wasn't Antwerp at a certain moment also the financial capital of the world? That's true, that was in the 16th century, and it was Diogo Mendes. Diogo Mendes was a Jewish uh, Sephardic uh, businessman mm -hmm. who created his uh, banking house in Antwerp. He financed uh, kings, he d financed the uh, spice trade, the diamond trade. Yeah. So the, the Jewish community in Antwerp, the Sephardic Jews, were very, very important, and yeah. they were responsible for the huge activity and Antwerp had the first stock exchange in the world yeah. and also the first newspaper. So this is in, uh, very important. Stick on for more uh, exciting revelations on Belgian people. Uh, we are now actually, we're at the water. You can see the water here already is the most beautiful promenade uh, where the, the buildings have been kept the same, but at the same time they've built some new houses in a very advanced architectural style with fancy colors called yep now, interesting to mention this is the castle had stain and this in fact is the south street streetport museum of antwerp it's the maritime museum in antwerp yeah. so it's a bit different than the one in new york huh? there's always a link if you want to find it here again van megam very dark but i see a little bit more color and more light Yes, although this is very typical again for 1899, you see the date on the drawing, and in very interesting to mention, I'll show you mm -hmm. the proof that Vermeegem didn't sell during his lifetime. He made these drawings on paper that he recovered. 
So you see, this is a lithograph by Larmans, Eugene Larmans, yeah. a very important Belgian artist. And mm -hmm. probably Larmans gave his lithograph to Van Meegen. And Van Meegen, who was poor, who didn't sell any drawings during his lifetime, just made his own drawing on the reverse side of the lithograph of Larmans. So this is a recycling project. It's indeed. It's indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you don't want to see one side, you can always turn it around and have uh, two paintings. This beautiful drawing is uh, made in 1904 and has just been reproduced, this drawing, in the New York Times. So we had a very good review uh, two weeks ago in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And this is a Jewish emigrant waiting for the ship yep. on the Rhine Kai. Yep. And this is a uh, fantastic uh, quality and it's uh, also quite rare. So in total, we presume that he made something like 100, 150 drawings about uh, immigrants. Yeah. We're walking further and further towards um, our point of departure for the States. Here we have the promenade again at Steyn, yeah. at the background. Um, who are these people? I mean, if you look at them, they... They don't look like immigrants. I think on Sunday, this is probably on Sunday, the people were well dressed and mm -hmm. they just made a promenade next to the River Skelt. It was very popular in, the, in those days. Mm -hmm. But the immigrants, in fact, took the Jordan Sky yeah. and then next to the River Skelt, they walked to the Rhine Quay where the ships were lying uh, for departure. Yeah. But then they went to the warehouse of the Red Star Line on the corner of the Rhine Quay mm -hmm. and the Montevideo Street. And there in the warehouse of the uh, Red Star Line was the doctor waiting for them to have the last examination. Because you know, Pam, when they arrived on Ellis Island and they had uh, some kind of sickness, they were sent back at the expense of the shipping company. They better were going in it Flemish, it would say, het kaf van het koor is scheiden. Uh, for the initiated, uh, separate the real uh, sick from the, 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 the ones that could board but there was a second inspection and then in New York at Ellen's Island when they came back I had another show about that um, you can always go back to my archives to find that one um, this is it this is the Ren um, this is where the museum will yeah, be the old warehouses of the Red Star Line we'll see another uh, photograph where it's more uh, clear mm -hmm. but they were in front of the Rhine K Rhine Kai yeah. in Dutch and you see the Red Star Line ships were moored next to the Rhine K yeah. so this neighborhood was called the little island at Eilandje because it was the old part of the port surrounded by water mm -hmm. so the people who lived on the island uh, couldn't get off when the bridges were up, they couldn't leave the island. Yeah. So it was quite special. It's the mini Manhattan of, uh, of Antwerp. Yes, yes. <laughs> I saw 25 years ago and I was convinced seeing this quality that one day Van Meegen would become very, very famous. Yeah. So this is the little island yeah. where he lived. And you see, this is the Kattendijk dock. And the activity in the port was such you see, you could walk from one side of the dock to the other side, walking on the ships. Yeah. There was so much activity. It's incredible. And you see, he uses the color of mm -hmm. the paper to strengthen the atmosphere. It's yeah. beautiful work. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a pleasure to, uh, to have a very interesting tour with Erwin, the curator of the Van Meegen Museum. He pointed out the last painting for me to, to, to say goodbye as far as this little section is concerned. Uh, the Working Woman, the Working Woman of the Port of Antwerp, showcasing that Van Meegen was pretty aware of the importance of women uh, as the backbone or one of the backbones of the Antwerp industry. So the ships are sailing off, we're sailing off, we're saying goodbye to Erwin and thank him, of course, for the amazing insight and historical facts that he has been able to tell us today. Let's troll around a little bit more and let's get uh, another view on the Seaport Museum. Take care. Every night at ten, we sang an old refrain As we wandered in the moonlight Down sunny side lane 
We heard the merry lark, and if the night was dark, I'd steal a kiss again. As we wandered in the moonlight, down sunny side lane, hey ho, around you my arms would be curled. And a care in the world Someday if luck is kind I leave my cares behind To be with you again And we'll wander in the moonlight Down sunny side lane for watching the uh, show Our Planet. It was a pleasure to take you with me on a trip to the Seaport Museum, the museum at Fulton Street in downtown New York that showcases wonderful exhibitions on boats, on shipping lines, and more specifically today on the Red Star Line. This was the line that took over 3.8 million immigrants from Antwerp, my hometown, to New York. And among the famous people were Einstein, and they also say that the Rockefeller family came on that ship. So history meets future, meaning we have looked at the treasures from the past. We have looked at the situation, how migration happened in the past pretty much tucking into the topic of immigration today worldwide and if you want to react there's an email address info at pamelapeters.com we look forward to see you again in two weeks and for you one more thing it's to celebrate life every single month. <laughs>